In this video, I want to talk a little bit about some of the problems I've been encountering with these new LED backlights used in LCD TVs. As most of you know, we started out using the cold cathode fluorescent lamps, which were these thin fluorescent tubes here. And they had their problems, but they seemed to be fairly reliable for the most part. And uh, of course, you had to have a high voltage inverter to be able to power a lot of these cold cathode fluorescent lamps and sometimes they were a bit of a problem but some genius decided that it would be a good idea to start using LEDs I guess because of their energy efficiency and so the LEDs which we're seeing used in a lot of different consumer electronic equipment nowadays were suddenly being used as backlights in the LCD TVs some were what they call uh, side lit where you'd have a, a channel of uh, LEDs that would illuminate the backlight from the side of the display and then some were <coughs> were more laid out like this where you had the light coming off of the LED shining directly at the the uh, light diffuser that would spread the light out evenly over the LCD display. Well one of the problems I've been encountering a lot is that a lot of these LEDs are now burning out and I suspect that we're probably better off sticking with the old the cold cathode fluorescent lamps because uh, well as, as many failures as I'm starting to see I I don't know if they're overdriving them or what they're doing but it's been a real headache especially with the uh, L, LG models that have been coming in here some of the smaller LG models uh, seem to have multiple burnout LEDs in some cases uh, the TV might only be you know a year or two old and uh, I noticed on that particular model or models rather that came in here I don't know that all LG TVs are bad but on a couple of them I measured the current going to the LEDs and one thing that surprised me was when I first turned the TV on for some reason there would be three times almost three times the amount of current going to the LEDs for the first 10 seconds that it came on so I don't know if they've got a voltage regulation flaw or what it is but let me see I measured uh, let me see 140 140 milliamps on one particular model going to the strand of LEDs uh, let me see oh that was times three 46 milliamps per strand and then I went up to 420 milliamps for the first 10 seconds that the TV came on I tried putting a resistor in one thinking uh, maybe I could cut the current back a little bit and it uh, it caused the TV to go into shutdown it, the TV's designed because of the feedback circuits it's designed to see a certain load um, in the way of the backlights and if it doesn't it'll make it go into shutdown so um, <clears throat> the other problem uh, sometimes you can have a bad LED in a strand that actually lights up but it's starting to consume too much current because it's going bad and one gentleman told me he he was surprised to see that when he replaced the LED strand even though it seemed to be okay uh, that solved the problem so that can be very tricky to find now one way to check these LEDs is to uh, take a an external power supply and a lot of times there'll be a test point on the LED strand itself uh, for example this one here if you had a uh, I don't remember what voltage it ran at I'll just say that well this is a two-part strand you can unplug it here so let me see this one is connected across here at the end so if I, I think it was around 19 volts or something like that if you apply 19 volts to these two test points here you could get the strand to come on and test them now another technique I've been using to test the LEDs and this may sound a little bit surprising but I've actually found that you can take an AC cord uh, where you've got 120 volts AC put a 10,000 ohm resistor in series with your AC cord and actually uh, drop the current low enough to where you can actually test the LED strands just to see if they're coming on now it's not going to be very much brightness with that size resistor and uh, believe me that resistor will get hot real quick so be careful there but uh, you know it is enough to see if there's an obvious problem it's not always going to tell you the health of the LEDs but it, it can oftentimes be enough just to cause them to to illuminate of course we know that uh, LEDs run on direct current but uh, since LEDs are diodes uh, they will do their own rectification and uh, that's one way to check them um, now I tried ordering individual LEDs from a company that's that sells them and I ran into some real problems trying to find out individual replacement LEDs I I was unsuccessful I used all these different numbers here 
fact, I don't remember it was DigiKey or, or Mouser, uh, one of those companies, uh, or I think it was SuperBrightLEDs.com and DigiKey rather. Uh, they sold me a uh, a bunch of these individual LEDs, and and I found that they were all too big. And I did a lot of research trying to find out what would be the right ones uh, for the TV, and I couldn't find them. Now, some of these LEDs I also found out are, are actually three LEDs in one. So you'll, you'll look at the schematic and you'll wonder what you're looking at. And turns out that they're actually using uh, three LEDs in one little teeny package. And um, the solder connections may look like this. That they may vary. But, uh, yeah... Um, it's been a been a bit of a problem finding LEDs. So what I've done in some situations is I'll I'll simply take another strand of LEDs. I'll cut out an individual square like this, and rather than unsolder the LED from the circuit board and possibly damage, which is easy to do, I will um, solder a couple of wires on the end and set it right next to the the uh, bad LED and re resolder my wires to it and put the uh, light diffuser back back on it of course and sometimes you can get away with that now here's something to consider this is something that NorCal uh, brought up in his video and I think he's absolutely correct if you're going to go ahead and replace one bad LED you can probably count on the fact that the other LEDs are going to be going bad soon enough and so I'm at the point now where unless I can find a, a whole set of new LEDs. I want to let the customer look. No, look, this thing isn't going to last. I can fix it. You know, maybe I can do it for 50 bucks or something for you, but I don't expect it to last. And uh, uh, there are some companies that will sell you whole strands of LEDs. I wouldn't want to use used ones, of course, because they're not necessarily going to last. And that would definitely be an issue. Um, gosh, I could probably just go on and on about all the all the different problems I've run into. Uh, since these uh, LED TVs have come out. Oh, what I was going to say is if you do buy some replacements on eBay, keep in mind not all LEDs use the same voltage and current. I've had some LEDs come in here that actually use 6 volts, some that use 2.5 volts. And uh, as you know, there's a voltage drop that occurs across each LED. Um, so that, for example, let's say we had a 14.4 volt battery here. If I had uh, four LEDs that each use 3.6 volts, this would be an ideal uh, power supply voltage to operate them. It creates, in a circuit like this, in a series circuit where you've got LEDs tied together in series, it creates a voltage drop across each LED. So if you measured with your meter across any of these points here, you're only going to see about 3.6 volts going to each LED. And that's why in, the, in these TVs now, if you look at the way they're laid out, you're going to see series parallel circuits where this one for example I started out I think it was 212 volts DC from uh, the two main input wires but then if you look at the way there were jumpers across the the LEDs and whatnot it turned out that each LED saw a much smaller voltage going across it in this particular TV I think I measured about 5.57 volts for each LED and so uh, yeah, some of this stuff can get a little bit confusing, for sure. Um, let's see. I'm sure there's... I just had a little pause on my video, so I hope I can take it from here. Um, one thing I realized I forgot to mention was that uh, you can test some of these LEDs using your multimeter. If you put it on the diode scale and you uh, just touch across the two input connections on the LED, you can see it'll light up. That's one way to test them. Although, of course, to do that, you have to pull off the diffuser. So uh, when you pull off the diffuser, I, I recommend that you put some sort of mark on it so you know exactly how to replace it, how it was. You don't want to get glue on the LED itself, but uh, it's good to try to put the diffuser back as close to how it was as possible. Now, I remember one time I tried putting one of these LEDs on top of the, the strand in other words, instead of putting it off to the side, I tried mounting it on top like this and putting a diffuser. And somehow the focal point of the light got all screwed up and I had this big bright spot coming out on the display. And I had to use some unusual techniques to diffuse it again. But uh, anyway, um, let me see. The other thing I was going to say, don't, don't try jumping these LEDs. If you have a bad one, yeah, you can jump it and it'll probably come on. But that's a very big mistake. 
I talked to one gentleman in a shop that said he was doing that, and I explained to him that uh, why you can't get away with it. Back to that voltage drop uh, principle, you got to figure in this circuit here, for example, if you jump one of these LEDs, that means every other LED in the circuit is now going to see um, 4.8 volts instead of 3.6 volts because you know you're going to have less of a voltage drop. And I heard a story about one gentleman taking a resistor in replace in place of an LED that went bad. I don't remember what value it was. I thought I heard a rumor that it was 10 ohms at 2 watts or something like that. And uh, don't uh, don't assume that I'm right in what I'm telling you here. I, it's been a while since I heard the story. But uh, the other thing I was going to say now, I've gotten in a lot of trouble removing the displays from these TVs. Now I measured the thickness of one of these LCD displays. This particular one is about one millimeter thick. And I got to tell you, they're extremely fragile. Even though I know better and I know the risk of removing them, some of these TVs, it's almost like they don't really expect you to ever remove this display. Because I had one come in the other day, and this TV had like a, like a glue almost on the edge of it. So when I'm trying to pry it, and I'm being kind of gentle, and I'm pushing slowly, I pulled it out. All of a sudden, I noticed there was a huge crack in it. And I, I, I just felt sick because, you know, this has happened, I think, about four times now. And I called the customer. I was honest about it because the display wasn't the issue. And I, I told them what happened. I said, what do you want me to do here? And they, they kind of left it up to me. So I said, I'll, you know, I'll give you a couple hundred bucks toward a new, a new TV if you're good with that. And they were real, real decent about the whole thing. And, and I find most of the time when you screw up, you just tell the customers the truth. They're usually pretty decent about it. Of course, you got to be willing to make it right by them, and uh, yeah. So if you got to remove these displays, I, I don't know that you can be careful enough. You know, as as much as I know better than to be rough or be in a hurry when I'm removing one of these displays, I still have broken a few. So I'm at the point now where I'm getting a little bit frustrated at any of these TVs that come in with bad L LEDs in them, like this one here. The customer just gave it to me. He said that they the he bought an extended warranty on the TV. And the um, the uh, manufacturer just sent them a new TV. They didn't want to mess around trying to fix the old one. So I, I always tell people, if you're going to buy a new TV nowadays, probably a good idea to buy a uh, an extended warranty. And uh, you know, I think some of these LEDs can can be pushed rather hard. In fact, on the top of my roof here, these are all LED lights I'm using in in these uh, pictures here. And I've had, I think I've been going over a year now, and they're doing pretty good. And each one of these LED lights puts out about 60 watts. Now, you know what I think would have been really nice? If they would have designed these TVs so that the average consumer could just unscrew a few things and slide in a new LCD strip without having to pull out the display. Obviously, the manufacturers are in it for themselves. Not that Actually, I don't know that they plan it that way, but it seems to work out that way. Uh, here's another little... Uh, piece of information you might find interesting. I, I would always assume that on every TV the brightness adjustment would adjust the voltage going to the LEDs. Well I was wrong about that. Um, I found out like on the LG TV that I mentioned I've seen a lot of problems with when I adjusted the brightness and the contrast and the, and the backlight none of them affected the actual voltage going to the LEDs in the particular model I was working on. I know that's not true with all models. But uh, I don't know if I mentioned also that not all, not all LEDs run on the same voltage. I've seen some that run on 2.5 or 2.6 volts, and I've seen others that, that operate on almost 6 volts. So it's not a one-size-fits-all situation if you're looking for a replacement. You can't just look in your junk pile and assume that because you've got a strand of LEDs that those are going to be the right ones for your set. So anyway, I hope I said enough here in my video. Uh, when I sit down and watch my videos, oftentimes I realize I wish I had said something else, but I, I think I got it all in there this time. So I appreciate all you folks that subscribe to my videos. And as always, if you like the video, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up.